evening, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's great to have you all here tonight. At this time, I'd like to ask that you pull out your hymnals and stand, if you're able, as we sing our course of the week, 509. 509. Please stand, if you're able. Stand as we sing. Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim his worthy praise forever. Amen. All right. So this time I'll ask that you turn to our next hymn, 322. 322. 322. 322. We'll sing all three verses. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner in mass, not so far lost. From victory unto victory's army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished. And is Lord indeed. Verse 2. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. Forth to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. He that all men now serve him against a numbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength will strength up both. Must be. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The armor flesh will fail you, he dare not trust your heart, but on the gospel This time we'll have Welcome and Prayer by Pastor Storm. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for the great morning we had. We just pray now that you'll guide and direct everything that's said and done here tonight. They'll be for your honor and your glory. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We just pray now that you'll help us and guide us. I just pray that we might, when we leave this place tonight, say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. We'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> hey. Our next hymn will be 323. 323. One page after the last one. 323. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let his praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God, but still standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, verse 4, standing on the promises I cannot fall, 
Holding every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Hi. Right. It's that time of the week again. Phrases. Everyone's favorite time. Hi. Right. Uh, I'll, yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry, it's phrases. Sorry, uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, phrases as you phrases. It's time for phrases, and as, as and as you and as usual, I'm going fast. So he, okay. for the. Uh, sorry. Grateful for the great school week we had, and that we're all, and that we're all, and that we're all, that we're already through the, well, well, first half of the first week, our first half of the first quarter, first, mm. yes, first half, that we're already through the first half of the first quarter. It's going really great so far, so praise God for that, and it's also going really fast, so, yeah. Also that college, also that online college classes are going well, so praise God for that. Hmm. Right, who would like to go next? Yes. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Thank you. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Oh, what's up? Praise God for that. Amen. That's exciting. Right, who would like to go next? All right. Then at this time, we will have announcements by Pastor Storm. lot to praise the Lord about. There's something always good to praise the Lord about. You know, today was such a good day. I got home and I sat down and I turned on the TV and I thought, oh, hey, there's a football game. I got about halfway through it and realized that it was played last night. <laughs> <coughs> so I, I watched the rerun. Anyway, but what was good about it was it was kind of boring, so I went to sleep. So I got a nice nap out of it and, and um, I woke up and my little dog was laying right alongside me, just snuggle up as tight as could be. So, but anyway, it, it's always good to be able to uh, go home and take a little rest, a little siesta, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, just kind of rest. You know, the Lord's day is a day of rest. And uh, so, anyway, we've got Sunday school at 9 o'clock, Sunday morning worship at 10. We have Wednesday evening uh, prayer meeting Bible study at 6 o'clock. We have uh, Friday Food Bank at 9 o'clock, Saturday Bus Calling, and Soul Winning at 9 a.m. Also coming up on um, uh, September the um, 4th, we've got uh, Question and Answer. The 13th, we've got Tug. The 14th is Men and Ladies Fellowship. Also, we've got our first trap and skeet uh, shoot that morning. Um, we'll be sh um, having the uh, meeting early in the morning about 10 o'clock. And um, we should be done by noon. And then um, coming up on the 15th is Western Sunday. The 21st is uh, also trap and skeet uh, practice. The 26th and 27th is uh, Christian Educators Conference. The uh, 29th is Noisy Bucket. Uh, September the 30th through October 11th is our fall break. October the 2nd is also question and answer. Uh, the 5th is men's breakfast. The 6th is our revival starts on um, October the 6th through the 11th. <clears throat> and uh, so make sure you plan on being here every night that week. You're going to get a blessing, I guarantee it. 
Um, Brother Gary Mann will be here from Longview, Texas, and I'm um, looking forward to that. Uh, coming up on October the 11th is Tug. The 13th is uh, Old Fashioned Sunday. Man, I'll tell you, well, we have a full month of October. I mean, no, October has got everything, as much in it as we can possibly get. Uh, the 14th is uh, we come back to school. The um, uh, 19th is uh, Men and Ladies Fellowship. The um, 26th and 27th is uh, Junior Regionals. And then the, also on October the 27th is Noisy Bucket. So <clears throat> there's an awful lot coming up and going on the next two months. November is just as packed. Uh, November, there's no um, weekends open in November and December. Um, so between now and the first of the year, uh, we got something going on all the time. And somebody said, why are you so busy? Well, you know, if you're not busy for the Lord, who are you busy for? Amen? And I'd rather have people busy for the Lord than busy for old funny face. Amen? And uh, so, but it's good to have everybody here tonight. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great night. Amen? Amen. All right, Abed. All right, please stand for your able as we sing our chorus of the month, 297. 297. Please stand. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to me. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon Him. One more time. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His word. Hearken to the voice of God to me. Is anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone. And rest upon his word for everything, oh, everything. Yes, everything is possible with God. Roger, won't you ask a blessing on that? Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. We thank you for, for our blessings that you give us. Thank you for the, the grace that you have upon us, Lord. We just ask now that you bless the offering, Lord. Bless the Amen. You may be seated.
Right. It's time for our last hymn number before the message. 345. 345. We'll sing all three verses. 345. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. do not care everything to God in prayer bust you happy trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so terrible to get old. Amen. But you know what? I'm glad I am. Amen. All right. Turn your Bibles, you will, tonight to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. We're in the Old Testament this morning. We're going to be in the New Testament tonight. The book of Matthew. And uh, got something I want to take and talk about tonight. You know, as you get older, <clears throat> things are different, aren't they? I don't think there's one of us sitting in here tonight who uh, can't say that things are different now than what they were when you were growing up. Brother Holcomb, when you were growing up, when you were a boy, how did you get from point A to point B? Walk. How did you get to school? Walk. Yeah, when you wanted to go see some in town or something, you rode a horse. I mean, that's the way it was. You know, now, you know, if, if you live more than a block from school, you got to have a ride. You know, and just, uh, I can remember living in um, the town we did. Our, the school was in our town, and uh, it was about, oh, man, three-quarters of a mile away. We had to go across the river and, and stuff, and anyways, but we walked every day. Didn't matter how deep the snow was, didn't matter how cold it was, how hot, you know, we still walked. And, you know, back in those days, did you have air conditioning in your, your schoolhouse? No. You know what? We didn't either. Uh, no, there was no air conditioning. You know, you'd get to school, and, you, and it'd be hot and humid, and Wisconsin was hot and humid both. And I can remember times it was 80, 85 degrees outside. And, uh, you know, I, I just longed to get done with school and get home as fast as I could to go and go in the walk-in cooler in the store. And I would stand in there cooling off. And uh, um, I'll tell you what, back then, why, you know, it was, uh, we didn't have air conditioning. We just, um, you know, it was just something else. But I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about things that are the same but different. Things that are the same but different. Have you ever thought about that? Things that are the same but different. You know, um, as I was thinking about this message, you know, I got to thinking that 
you know, in the day and age that we live in today, you know, there's a lot of things that are, are the same but, but different. You know, you can have two cars. They can have four wheels on them. They can be white. They can both be convertible. One can be a Chevy and one can be a Ford. You know, you can take in, um, you can have um, two bowls of cereal. You know, one can have one cereal. They look alike. They're all made out of oats. They're all made out, you know, they might all be flakes. But you know what? They taste a little different. You know, you can, you can have <clears throat> um, two dogs. You know, I've got two dogs. And you know what? They both bark. They, you know, Lucy has a little different bark than what Max says. But they both bark. You know, they both have four feet, and they both got a tail. But yet they're totally different dogs. Even though they're dogs, they're totally different. You know, you can have two houses in the same housing development. They can have the same white picket fence around both of them. They can be in a, a cookie cutter housing development and they all look the same. But you know what? You can walk inside and they can be two totally different houses. The whole interior can be completely different. Not only that, but you can have two people sitting in the pews in a church. And you know what? They all have their Sunday clothes on. They all sing the same songs. They all sing, praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed redeemer. They all talk the Christian language. And yet, one can be a Christian and one may not be. You know, things many times are different than what they appear to be. I've got... A little experiment I want to do tonight. Um, Roger, come on up here. I have two bottles of water. Okay? They're, actually, it says, Great Value Purified Drinking Water. And this one says, Great Value Purified Drinking Water. They're both the same. Don't they look the same? They're both about the same, has about the same amount in them. Right? You know, they, they look exactly the same. They, uh, they both have zero calories. They both have uh, uh, everything the same. They, are, they look identical, don't they? Take a drink out of each of them. <laughs> hmm? Are they the same? What's, what's different about them? Huh? Well, but you know what? They look the same, don't they? They look the same. They look identically the same. There's no bubbles in this one. There's no bubbles in this one. They look identically the same. However, this one is water. This one is 7-Up. But see, you can have that. But you know, that's the thing, is that many times we look at things and we perceive them to be the same when they're totally different. You know, have you ever opened, <laughs> have you ever opened a can of something and you thought to yourself, well, this is such and such, you know, working, you know, running a food bank, this happens a lot when all of a sudden there'll be cans that come in that don't have any labels on them. And, you know, you'll, you'll have a can and you're thinking, you shake it and you go, man, that sounds, that really sounds like it might be soup. You know what I mean? And you're shaking it. You get it home and you think, well, you know, it's probably soup. You open it up and here's a can of pinto beans. Yeah, listen, it's the same can. It has the same outside. But you know, it's totally different on the inside. And you know, so many people are that way. They look the same on the outside, but they're totally different on the inside. I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13 here for a minute. <laughs> We're going to be looking at some verses, starting at verse 24. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. <laughs> it says, In another parable put he forth unto them, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And when the time come of harvest, I will say unto the reapers, Gather up together first the tares, then and uh, bind them in bundles to burn them and gather the wheat unto up um, into the into my barn. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank for all you've done for us. I pray now that you'll guide and direct in this message tonight that we might get something out of it. I just want to be a help to the people tonight. I pray that they listen intently, that they'll get something out of this. We'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, in the scripture that we just read, <clears throat> we see that there was something very bad happening. We see that, that there was something that was almost uncontrollable that went on. In, uh, in verse uh, 24, uh, look what it says. It says that another parable put forth um, unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, I want to I wanna look at this for just a minute, and I know Brother Holcomb, he's going to be able to help me out with this, <clears throat> but when, when a person was going to plant something in a field, what was the first thing he had to do? He had to plow up the field, didn't you? He? he had to get the field ready to be planted. You know, I can remember as a boy, I'd take and get on the tractor, and my dad taught me how to plow a field. Do you know there's a right way and a wrong way to plow a field? I didn't know that. I had no idea. First time I got on this tractor, I thought, man, this is going to be fun. You know, I could hardly wait to get out in that field. He had a two-bottom plow behind this tractor. He only gave me two bottoms because he knew I was going to mess up. And um, I thought, okay, here we go. And I get out in that field. And I took off across that field. And I was doing such a good job, man. I'll tell you what, I was just plowing and plowing and plowing and plowing. And I got to the other side of the field. And I turned around and looked. And I'm going, wow, what happened? I mean, I started out point A, and I ended up way over here in point B. I mean, that furrow was so crooked, it was unbelievable. My dad was standing back there laughing his head off. I thought, why is he laughing at me? So I drove back there at the tractor. I said, hey, what happened? He says, where's your marker? I said, what marker? You didn't tell me I had to have a marker. He said, didn't you ever watch me plow before? I said, yeah. He says, if you look down at the end of the field... On one of the posts down there, I always tied my scarf on there, my uh, uh, neckerchief. I said, really? He goes, yeah. I said, why do you do that? He says, because as I'm going across that field, I'm looking at that. That way, I keep a straight ferrule. So I went back over, went across the field. I tied on a, a rag on the, onto a fence post. I went back. And you know what? That next furrow was just as straight as an arrow all the way across there. You know, what we need to realize is when we're getting ground ready to be planted, it has to be done correctly. Now, I'm sure that this farmer had taken and his servants had taken and pl uh, plowed up this field 
to where everything was ready to go. Not only did they plow it, but they probably dissed it. They dragged it. They got it all ready to be planted. And the farmer said, well, here. Here's good seed that we're going to plant in this field. Now, I can see these guys out there just planting away, you know, as they went. Getting the weed all planted and ready to go. You know, I'm sure they didn't have um, grain drills like we do today, but, you know, I'm sure they went out by hand and planted all by hand. But they planted good seed. This guy had paid a lot of money for good seed. <clears throat> and they had put a lot of work in getting the uh, field ready to go. And, uh, um, you know, no doubt um, um, they went and they, they worked hard trying to get everything ready to go. Now, here we see that he did everything that he needed to plant that field. He probably even had irrigation set up. You never know. But, you know, he had everything ready to go for that wheat field. Everything. And they went and they planted the field. But, you know, the certain man toiled to get everything done. And he did everything right. Everything that he knew how to do planting that field was done. Everything. But then his enemy came. Look at verse 25. It says, But while the man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, this guy must not have been very well liked by some of his neighbors. Amen? You know, that's the way it was on farms back in the old days. You know, how many of you have ever seen some of these range movies on TV? You know, where, where the rain people are, are um, the cow people are, are upset with the farmers because they don't want the farmers out there because they want all the ranges open and there's a range war. <clears throat> well, hey, it started all the way back here. It started way back when. Because Farmer A was mad at Farmer B because Farmer A got more yield than Farmer B did, and he would, didn't feel that it was fair, so they did a lot of crazy things back then. But here we see that this guy, <clears throat> you know, he may have taken and done a little soul winning out at this other farmer. And the guy didn't like it. He got offended. He said, I don't want to hear about the Lord. You know, we have no idea why they came and sowed tears, but we know that they did. You know, <clears throat> they were so angry that they went and they sowed bad seed or quack grass in with the wheat. Now, I don't, how many of you know what quack grass is? You do? You bet. Hard to get rid of, ain't it? Do you know that my wife has been trying to get rid of quack grass for 20 years? Do you know that? When we moved down, we moved down from Wisconsin 20 years ago, she had a spider plant. You know what a spider plant is? It's got all kinds of, anyway. But it, I never liked it in the beginning, and so she, it died. And uh, so she took and she threw it away, but the dirt she put in our garden. And the dirt had quack grass roots in it. And I'll tell you what, that stuff took over like you would not believe. We spread pure Roundup on them. I mean, right out of the, right out of the bottle Roundup. And we could never kill them. In fact, they're still growing. It's unbelievable. You put a little water, boom, there they are. You know, it's unreal. And you know, I can see what's happening here. This guy probably had quack grass that was planted in with his wheat. That wasn't a very nice neighbor, was it? You know, after all, he spent all that time preparing that field, and then somebody comes along and plants something else in it. You know, the farmer... <clears throat> had no idea that these seeds were planted in his field. You know, this farmer had went to bed. His servants had went to bed. They were all tired because they had planted that field, and they thought they did it correctly. 
They let their guard down. They let their guard down. Listen, there's an awful lot of Christians like that. There's an awful lot of Christians who let their guard down when they feel things are going good. After all, what did this farmer think? This farmer thought, you know what? We're going to have a great crop. Our barns are going to be full of wheat. We're going to have a bumper crop this year. Everything was all set. And they let their guard down. And the enemy came in. And the enemy sowed tares in amongst the wheat. Now, they didn't notice it right away. They did not notice it right away. You know, things are not the same, but they're different. Look at verse 26. It says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. You know, everything was going really, really well. Now, I can see this happening, and, and I know uh, those of you who've had gardens and things like that can, can say, yeah, I, I know what that's like. All of a sudden, you see a little plant come up. See a little green coming up? Remember that? You know, I, I used to love going out and looking at cornfields that have been planted in the spring. And then you go by there again about two weeks later, and boy, that corn's up about that high. And you can row it all. You can see all the rows. You go by a, a hay field or a wheat field, and you can see all the it coming up around. And you're going, wow, man, they're going to have a good crop this year. And, you know, I think that's what was happening with this farmer. He probably went out to his field. He looked, and he said, hey, it's coming up. Yeah. Everything's looking good. The blades are coming up out of the ground. The seed germinating. I'm going to have a good crop of wheat. I can see it happening. But it wasn't until the fruit came, until the wheat headed out, and this, the wheat seed started to come on the top of it, that they noticed also the tares. You know, what we need to realize is this, is that Things can be the same, but they're different. All of a sudden, he went out and he looked and he saw all those blades coming up out of the ground. And he's going, wow, we're really going to have a good crop. Not realizing some of them were tares. He was thinking they were all wheat. Didn't know the difference. They all looked the same. You know, <laughs> that's the way it is in life many times, is we think that everything looks the same, it's got to be the same. You know, it's just like those two bottles of water. You know, Roger thought they were both water. Boy, did he have a surprise, amen? Good thing I had seven up in there, not something else, amen? <clears throat> but you know, I feel that the plant, when it started to bud, that's when they saw the tares also coming up. You know, when the plants were first coming up, there was no difference in them. They couldn't tell the tares from the wheat. <clears throat> you know, I remember when um, my wife and I used to have a garden. What was one thing that you always put at the end of the garden? There's something, when you planted a row of something, you always put it at the end of the garden. What was it? Huh? A what? Come on, you gardeners. We always put the package of whatever we planted on a stick at the end of the row so we knew what was in that row. Did you ever do that? Put that on there? Do you know why we did? Because I couldn't tell the difference between beans and peas when they came out of the ground. I couldn't. We put that on there and we go, okay, this is the bean row, this is the pea row, oh, hey, this is the corn row. You know what I mean? And that way we could tell what was in there. I don't think this, no, I'm sure this farmer knew exactly what was in his field. But we did that, and that's how we knew what was in and what was not in that, in that garden. You know, it's important to see that the tares did not bring forth 
what? Fruit. The tares did not bring forth fruit. Did you notice that? You know, let's, let's take a look at verse 25 again. It says, but while the men, oops, let's go to 26. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth what? Fruit. What brought forth fruit. Then appeared the tares also. That was the only way they could tell the difference between the good fruit or the wheat and the tares was that the wheat brought forth fruit. The only difference. That's the only difference. The only way they knew that it was bad was that it didn't bring forth any fruit. After all, what good was it? Absolutely nothing. It didn't even make good feed for the cattle. You know, <clears throat> you know they're much like the tares that Satan plants in a church. They're an awful lot like the tares Satan plants into our New Testament Baptist churches. And you know, things in people's lives may seem very good on Sunday. They walk through the doors, they have their Sunday clothes on, they have... They sit and they sing the same songs, they read the same scriptures, but when they go out into the world, they're completely different. They're completely different. They don't sing, praise him, praise him, Jesus is our blessed redeemer, when they get out in the, in the world. But you know, the servants, they wanted to take and purge that field. Look at verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? You know, these servants wanted to do what they could to help the farmer out. They thought, you know what? If we go out and we get down on our hands and knees and we start pulling all of the tares out, we can save the wheat. Now, I don't know, how many of you have ever weeded a garden? You know, my dad used to get so mad at me. And I did it on purpose. I really did. You know, I would go in and I'd have to go down this row and I'd have to take a hoe and I'd have to hoe out all of the weeds that are around the plant. Now, if there's no plants, what difference if there's any weeds or not? You following me? So after the plant would come up, I'd take the hoe and I'd go out and I'd hoe out the plants. So I didn't have to hoe anymore. Boy, I used to get whoopings over that. Man, I'll tell you what, my dad, he was not the happiest camper there ever was when he went out the garden and he saw weeds left and no plants. I was just a snot-nosed little brat. You know what I mean? And my dad knew it. And he was going to drive my brains from my seat to my head. Amen? And he did, too, many times. But, you know, that's what happens, isn't it? Is these guys wanted to go out and they wanted to take and they wanted to pick out all of the tares. But what did the farmer say? No, don't do it, because you'll also pull out the wheat. Now, more than likely, you know, they just scattered the, the, the seeds in a wheat field. So there was seed and plants all over everywhere. And he didn't want them to start pulling up the plants because then his wheat field would be ruined. There would not be a crop. You know, <clears throat> they had worked hard at something trying to make a good harvest for the farmer. You know, why don't you just let us go out and gather them up now? We don't have anything to do anyway, you know. He says, because you're going to ruin the crop. You know, they crept in. Many times these terrors will creep into the church the same way. You know, many times... 
there will be people that come to the church who are not as we are, but they seem like they are. Then when they're found out, right away, people come to my office banging on the door and saying, Preacher, you got to get rid of them people. They don't know what they're doing out in the community. You know, I get to thinking about that. And uh, I just take my time. I don't do anything right away. I just wait. You say, well, why do you wait? Because if I rip them out of the church, guess what? There might be some good fruit that's in this church that goes along with them. You know, what we need to realize is this, is that there are going to be people who are going to creep into this church who are not as we are. They may look like we are, they may sing like we do, but guess what? They're not like we are. They're not saved. They're not saved. You may say, well, how, how do you take care of something like that? I don't. I let God take care of it. After all, he's the one who allowed them to come in. He's the one who allowed the tares to come into the church in the first place. Why should I go and grab a hold of them by the seat of the pants and their collar and throw them out the door? God brought him in for a purpose. You know, I can think of many people that have come to this church who have been tares. And God has brought them here for a purpose. We had a man one time that came to this church. And I witnessed to him, witnessed to him, witnessed to him, witnessed to him. And he didn't want to hear anything about But you know what? He was one of the best carpenters I ever knew in my entire life, and I just worked the living daylights right out of him, got as much done as I possibly could before God took him away. He couldn't stand being in the service because he was so under conviction. Finally, before he left, he came into my office, and he says, I give up! I said, what do you mean you give up? He says, how do I get saved? I said, sit down. You know, what we need to realize is God brings tares in so that we can have someone to win to the Lord. You know, if we throw everybody out the minute they walk in, you know, over the 20 years I've been here, you have no idea, none, of the people that have walked through those doors. I remember one night, and if Tuck was in here, he could... Um, Go along with it. A guy walked through those doors, and I was standing up here, and I am not exaggerating. I could smell him from there to here. Not body odor, booze. He was so drunk, he could hardly stand up. That was before we had the, the uh, sound booth back there. And he walked in, and he fell right over. Boom. Tuck and another guy we had in church at that time grabbed a hold of him, picked him up, and uh, they're standing there looking at this. What do you want me to do? I said, Set him down. Sat down. Well, he was too drunk to get saved. But he sat in here, he's half asleep, you know. And uh, after the service, I said, Well, have a great day. And he walked out through the door, stumbling, falling down, getting back up. About a week later, same guy came back to church. Sunday morning. Suit and tie on. I didn't even recognize him. I did not recognize this guy. I'm thinking, who is this guy? Tuck walked up to me and he says, do you want me to sit by him? I said, who is he? He says, he's the guy that was here last Sunday night. or so drunk. I said, you sure? I said, he looks pretty cleaned up. He says, yeah, he says, this same guy. I said, okay, well, just stay close. So anyway, so the guy came up, and he sat right in the front row, right there. I'll never forget it. He sat right there, white shirt, tie, suit. He sat right there. Gave a, a message, gave salvation message, and 
and uh, gave the invitation. He was from there to here in about 30 seconds. Boom. I went down and I said to him, I said, would you like to get saved? He goes, yeah, I would. We went and we knelt down, took him through the plan of salvation. He got saved. I said to him, I said, can I ask you a question? Why did you come to our church? He says, I went to four other churches in town. They threw me out. You were the only one that let me stay. I said, wow, that was cool. He came back. He says, you know, he says, if, if a church will take and let somebody who is as drunk as I was stay in church, there's something different about that church. You know, listen, we don't want to throw the terrors out right away. We just don't. We don't want to just discard them because God is going to take care of them in his time. You know, more than likely, he's just going to say, okay, guys, get out. Leave. Just go on. Leave. Or they'll be so convicted of the word of God, they won't want to stay. That's just the way it is. Here we see that these guys wanted to take and tear everything apart. But you know, look what the far farmer said to them in verse 30. Let them both grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. He says, don't sweat it. Don't sweat the little things. I will take care of it. And that's what God says, too. Don't sweat it. I'll take care of you. This is my church. I'm going to take care of the things that are in this church. I will handle it. You know, each of us, <clears throat> including the preacher many times, wants to get things done and done now. You know what I mean? And it's taken me a long time to realize that, you know what? God is in perfect control. I can tell you time after time after time after time after time that we've had people in this church who have been terrors. And all of a sudden, either they die or God takes them out by one way or another and they're no longer in the church. I mean, it's just the way it is. He does not let tares in the church. You know, the funny thing that I see about this whole thing was that what, how did they know the difference between the tares and the wheat? By its fruit. The Bible says what? By their fruit, you shall know them. No fruit, maybe it's a tear. You know, <clears throat> we can use this message as a salvation message, by the way. You know, <clears throat> if you take and you, you look at this parable, the workers could be soul winners, sowing the gospel message. Satan comes along and he sows in some false gospel. And the uh, Saved and the unsaved grow together in the same church. But when the time comes, God separates them. You know, if you look at Matthew chapter 25 real quick. Matthew 25. Starting in verse 12, or 32, I'm sorry. Verse 32, and it says, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from the other, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You know, do we know who the goats are? Do we know who the sheep are? I don't. I don't know about you. 
I have no idea who's saved and unsaved in this church. I have no idea who's saved and unsaved. They come from the outside into the church. Are the things that you do, are they bearing fruit or do you live a phony life? Which is it? It's either got to be one or the other. You know, a life that looks good but is different. Something that looks the same, but it's different. Matthew chapter 24, <clears throat> verses 38 to 42. It's for, it, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There shall be two in the field. One shall be taken, the other one left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord cometh. Look what was happening there. There was wheat and there was tares. Did you notice that? There was wheat and there was tares. There was two people. One was wheat. The other one was a tare. The wheat was taken. The tare was left behind. All of a sudden, there's two women grinding at the mill. One was a wheat. The other one was a tare. The one that was a wheat was taken. The other one was left behind. That's what it's all. You know, there's so many times that we think to ourselves, well, you know, am I who I think I really am? Look at your life. What kind of a life do you live? Do you live a life in church with a happy-go-lucky smile? And then when you get out in the world, you're going, rawr, 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 type of life? What kind of fruit do you have? What kind of fruit do you have? You have fruit. We need to realize that we have wheat and we have tares. We have wheat and we have tares. The wheat are going to one day go to heaven. And they're going to be with the Lord. The tares are going to be gathered together and burned. You know, I'll tell you what, that's going to be a sad day when we stand before the Lord and all of a sudden we look and here's the great white throne judgment. I'm not going to be at the great white throne judgment. I'm going to be at the Bema Seat judgment. But we're going to see the great white throne judgment. And we're going to see all those who are going to be judged by God himself. And they're going to hear the words, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I knew you not. Wheat or tares, what are we tonight? Things look the same, but they can be perfectly different. We need to make sure where we are in the field. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for your love. We thank you most of all for dying on the cross for our sins. And Father, I just pray now that you'd guide and direct in this invitation. Father, maybe there's someone here tonight that has been playing the part of a tear. They don't really fit the weed at all. And Father, I just pray that they might tonight make the decision to come to know you as their personal Savior. With every head bowed and every eye closed for just a minute, maybe there's somebody here, maybe someone watching tonight, that you're not 100% sure that you are in the wheat part of it, but that you're a tear. And with an uplifted hand, you'd say, Preacher, would you pray for me? Pray that I can know for sure that I am part of the kingdom of God. That's you, just raise your hand quickly, quietly, anyone at all. 
anyone at all. If you're watching tonight and you're saying, you know, preacher, I'm not part of the weak. I'm a tear. You need to take right now and ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. And you can do that just by saying, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know there's a penalty for my sin. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. And I accept him to be Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. We're going to take and stand and turn our closing hymn to number 153. Sing two verses, and we'll be dismissed. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender Number four is the last. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy. <coughs> Let this sing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All. Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. Father, I want to thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this message. We just pray now that you'll help us to realize we need to be the good fruit. Help us to realize that there's going to be times when we're going to have tears coming in this church. We need to watch for them, but we know that you will clean them out. Father, I just pray now that you go before us. May your grace be upon each and every one of us as we leave this place. And we'll come back to our appointed place on Wednesday night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.